Welcome back to the channel. Another in the series of quick fixes on my Mercury here. Uh, last time we replaced the grill. And when I got this car, it was leaking coolant, wasn't running right. Um, I put a new intake on it to try and resolve that issue, which definitely fixed some of my issues as far as the coolant leaks and some of the poor running conditions. The next thing I ran into was that the mass airflow sensor had failed. I found that a mass airflow sensor out of my 96 Ranger uh, bolts right in and seems to be working fine. Now I have questioned that over time here. I've noticed that it does load up a little bit at idle. It just doesn't seem to have quite the power it did before. So I'm wondering if there's a calibration issue with that sensor. So while I was at the junkyard today, I went and picked up a mass airflow sensor off a light car and we're going to give that a try today. It's very important, you guys, if you're going and buying used parts, especially an electronic like this, um, you want to clean it up properly. And on this one in particular, mass airflow sensor cleaner is the way to go. Now all you need for tools to do this is an eight millimeter and a 10 millimeter. Eight millimeter takes your hose clamp off for your inlet duct. 10 millimeter takes the bolts out of your air filter housing to take the mass airflow sensor itself off. Here you can see the four screws. Well, you can't see all four, but there's four screws, one on each corner that correspond with these holes. Note the uh, offset to this. You wanna make sure you put that back in the right way. I find that a little extension Helps you get around the body of this. There we go, four screws out. There is a little gasket to it. Make sure you keep that. And there we go, there's our two mass airflow sensors. There's a lot of restriction in this one and the sensor itself is a different style sensor. Uh, that's why I question the calibration of this one versus this one to this car. So we'll see if it makes a difference. Installing it is just the reverse of taking them, taking it off, of course. Said these are pretty coarse thread screws, so you don't want to go smoking these things to Alabama and back. Oh, I'm never gonna see that again. And this might be a better job for a hand tool, but I'm lazy. I like my electric stuff. Put our tube back on. Tighten our clamp. Plug it back in. Now at this point you may think, great, we're done. No. Big thing with Fords, you always want to make sure you reset your fuel and idle adaptive anytime you change anything in the system. Now Ford refers to this as CAM, K-A-M. Um, keep a live memory. Now the difficult part with this is that you're going to either need a scan tool that's capable of resetting this or you're going to want to do a battery unhook hard reset to relearn those memories or zero them out in essence so the computer can relearn them. Neither one is a difficult task. If you do the battery method you just want to unhook the cables, let it sit for a given amount of time. I believe it's 15-20 minutes. Um, you can do the hard reset procedure where you take the cable off. I typically do the positive cable, stretch it over, give it a second, and then touch it to the negative cable. All you're doing is just taking any residual power out of the capacitors in the PCM for the car so it just drains that memory. Um, if you do it with the scan tool, which is what I would recommend to do, if you don't have access to one, you can try... Um, a local automotive shop, uh, they may be able to help you out with this. Typically it's not going to be something your normal O'Reilly's or Napa or parts store is going to have a scan tool capable of, they just have code readers. Doing the battery method works perfectly fine. Uh, I do have a couple scan tools at my disposal. So I'm going to get the scan tool hooked up, I'm going to get this memory reset, and then we're going to let it relearn fuel and idle. A couple clicks, you're pretty well done. Throttle. Reset Keep Alive Memory. 
Just like we talked about. And it's just telling you that the PCM has stored the adaptives for idle and fuel. Do you wish to continue? Of course we do, that's why we're in here. Test is now complete, which means that that has reset my idle and my fuel. And if all is good, hopefully my junkyard mass airflow sensor isn't a piece of crap. Well, we'll find out. Well, now that we've let the uh, engine come up to temp and got kind of all the idles relearned, I'm just out driving it a little bit of, you know, just mixed driving to let it relearn kind of all the things and uh, seems to be doing pretty good. I'm not noticing like, you know, a huge power difference in the thing, but I wouldn't expect to. Like I said, it's just little minor things. I noticed I took it out on the highway and it seemed to, at higher RPMs, do a lot better uh, than just my drive this morning. So hopefully, that solved my issue. We'll see about with it idling, if that's corrected at all. Everything seems to be all good. Hopefully that issue is resolved, and I can move on to the next one. I appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully that helps some of you out with uh, correcting your issues, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks. Ah, fishing for sockets.